let's hope that um that I, that the lines does not break while I'm doing this video. So I had a dream last night. I've been having many dreams. But um this one last night was very prophetic. And in my dream, um there was an we were in this army and we were calling in those who were to be a part of it. And each one was being marked by a seal of God. It was a, a scripture. And so that's how we would know who I'm assuming who would be part of who was part of us. So each person was being marked with a scripture, same scripture. And I remember seeing the words and I remember it, um, uh, the background was camouflaged, like, like army camouflaged was almost like hazed into the scripture and the scripture said, I'm going to sum it up. It says, I'm fighting with you. So the army must go forward. So it was, it was. It was God saying, I'm fighting with you, um, pretty much gather up the army because I can't even give you word for word. I can only remember what I remember re recollecting. So in my dream, it was dark, right? So usually when people prepare to attack, you do it at night. Um, it's very suddenly rare that they do an attack in the morning unless you've been attacked. So, um... Uh, so then, okay, so at night, so we, we're, we're bringing in people, people are coming in, we're, we're, we're sealing them. Next part of the, the dream, I hop into this helicopter and I'm in this helicopter and we're above this, you know, above we're looking down and I'm looking in the water and there's tons and tons of alligators some kind of sneaky i mean it was from the shore to the middle of the shore to the deep to the death and they were kind of like strategically put themselves there i know that alligators or crocodiles whatever you want to call them it's the Le leviathan spirit and i saw how it was mastered out in every part and, you know, I saw someone swimming and this person was swimming in the water and didn't know that there was an, <clears throat> an alligator right there. And so when the person swam and it like literally could like his hand could literally touch the alligator from, you know, from a stroke, he was gone. He was gone, which revealed to me that the that the enemy's strategy is not new it's an old strategy right that it's he's using but it revealed to me that the people are not aware of his strategies and can easily be devoured by the enemy so when i woke I mean, I went through different stages of the dream. I went through different stages and every stage was something different. And it was almost like I accomplished it. So every different stage of the dream was meaning that there's a different, there's a preparingness happening. God is preparing his people. People are coming into a place of being prepared to be a part of the collective body that's going to fight spiritually against, um, what the what the enemy is doing i mean i think i've had a dream about two years ago two years ago guys and in my dream i saw the enemy taking our children two years ago i saw the enemy take i i posted that on facebook i said sound the alarm sound the alarm begin to pray for the children and look at where we are we have a massive we had the massive shooting just that just happened. There's children writing in their journals about how they're preparing to do shootings, and they're getting 
caught by their parents. I mean, this is not stopping. I mean, it's been gradually happening, but now because we were not, oh, um, we were not taking heed. Maybe we were thinking or living in a mind of victory and we kind of forgot that there is a spiritual atmosphere that we have to war against. And now our children are running rampant in their mind with wicked things. I'm saying sometimes we have to listen and never disregard something so simple as someone saying, pray for your children. Because I saw the enemy grabbing their mind and my dream was so, it was real. It was as if I was in the room and he was grabbing their mind like an octopus and almost like, which, an, which octopus would mean mind controlling. Hey, Cheryl, it would be mind controlling. So I knew two years ago that we were going to have a war with our children. So here's what I came up with. We got first Corinthians, right? Chapter 12, 22. One, two, two, two. It says, for the day, for day by day, men kept coming to David to help him until there was a great army like, like the army of God. So God is getting people one by one, collecting them one by one to come and begin to help Jesus Collaborate, co-labor, co-labor guys with Jesus until we have a great army that looks like God's. Okay, I don't know if you guys know Chuck Pierce. Uh, Chuck Pierce is very known. He's a prophet of our nation. He had wrote a book. It's called A Time to Triumph, How to Win the War Ahead. And so I got this book and I, you wouldn't believe that the minute I opened up one chapter it literally was a word or let's say uh, teachings that God was giving me that I really didn't hear anyone else teaching on. And when I opened the book, there it was. He was receiving the same teaching revelation that God has given me and he put it down in clarity for those who have been hearing will hear and now see the clarity of what God was saying. And it talks about this whole new wineskin. But I'm not getting into that part of the chapter. No. Can you believe? I opened up this book this morning just to see if there was a chapter that he had written about this. And guess what? It says a triumph army is rising. So guess what? The army of God is rising. And one by, oh, it says day by day, men are being added to it. Why am I speaking about this today and probably why you won't get it is because you probably have been ignoring the call that God has been releasing over your life or the unction to be a part of the army. You probably have been living in the land of victory and kind of swimming in that water without knowing the strategy of the enemy, which has been made old. But, but if you're not sure what the strategy is, then to you, it's made new. And God doesn't want to see the people perish. People perish for the lack of vision. The vision of what? Sometimes they say that it's our vision that we lack, we perish. No, people lack, they says people perish for the lack of the vision. But guess what? It's his vision. It's God's vision. What vision? God's vision. Not our vision. God's vision. And that's why we perish. Listen to this. Anyone is following my Facebook? Guess what? You read the other day when I spoke about what prayer looks like. Holy Spirit gave me a revelation about a woman birthing. And he showed me the head at the canal. And he says, he was saying, do you stop pushing when the head is visible? And I said, no. He says, is it only takes contractions to get the birthing to happen? I said, no. Then he said, then you don't stop pushing and you don't. Stop just because you felt a contraction and left. You keep pushing even if you don't feel the contractions of the birth. So <clears throat> it says here that Isaiah 66, 7 says, Before a woman goes into labor, she gives birth. Before she has labor pains, she delivers a child. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Can a country be born in a day? Can a nation be born in a moment? When Zion went into labor, she gave birth 
birth to her children? Do I bring a mother to a moment of birth and not let her deliver? Ask the Lord. Do I cause a mother to deliver and then make her unable to have children? Ask your God, who all all who love Jerusalem be happy and rejoice with her, all who mourn for her to be glad with her, she will nurse and be satisfied from a comforting breast. So he goes on talking about this thing of labor, right? Which the Holy Spirit was talking to me. So we are, as a nation, in the midst of our birth pains. Come on, I'm going to get ready to teach you something that you probably have felt but wasn't sure what you were feeling. We are, as a nation, in the midst of our birth pains. Why? Because we are in the labor room. We are getting ready to birth the great awakening of God. Okay, so he goes on with that, right? But I'm not going to go there. We're going to go here. It says, God is calling a kingdom army full of prayer warriors who know their sapphires of authority. We are being sent again into society to break Satan's blueprints and transform the way we think. We must embrace the shifting paradigms communicated this hour from heaven. We must assist in development of strategy to unlock the nations of the earth. God will use his particular, pe peculiar, peculiar people to change the way his kingdom advances. Are we still praying? The answer is loud and yes. The army of God is daily growing strong. Ask the Lord to renew your prayer life. Pray with words and pray with the word. Travail in the spirit with the words unknown. Commune with your maker and be bold with the earth realm. Where you have been positioned as a witness to his love, grace, and power. Speak and decree the word. Come on, if you following me. I said in the beginning of February, it's time to decree and declare a word. And I broke down what decreeing and declaring means. Why? Because it is a time to decree and declare a word and establish it in authority and sapphire that God has given you. It says... <clears throat> Speak and decree a word. War with your prophecies. It says, do not let the confusion around you create a veil of darkness that stops you from moving forward. Yes, we are praying, but now we are not only praying. We are beginning to move those mountains. It's time. Hey, say good morning. It's time to begin to move the mountains that are before us because he says, do not be delayed. Do not be confused by what the darkness is creating around you. And trust me. The darkness is trying to create something around us, whether it's financial, whether it's um, a loved one, whether it's a bur it's a burden, whatever burden it is, it's trying to veil you to move, keep you from moving forward. It's not happening. It's distracting us. Okay, so here he says, "We, uh, I was a, I was a prayer warrior with Cindy as an intercessor, and, and this is what he goes on to say: It's time for an apostolic leadership gathering to begin to be established." Okay, so I'm going to move forward to the triumph of the army that's rising. And this is going to bring this in. The movement of God's people, the river, glo the ri the river of glory fire, looked like liquid glow flowing in the land. It reassembled fiery la lava moving from state to state. Every state had a movement. This group would destroy the works of the army in days ahead. Is there a movement in your city? You better start checking it out because he's saying every state had a movement. And this group would destroy the works of the enemy in the days ahead. Over the next seven years, they would mature to be ready to go into the war against the darkness attempting to bring the destruction. Listen here. We're not ready yet. We're not ready yet. And God is putting us every day, putting us in a position where he is preparing us for the days of head, for the days of head, where we were going to get to the place where we're going to be ready and established to... um to be able to be a part of the army of the Lord. So what's happening here is saying over the next seven years, they would be matured to be ready to go to war against the dark, attempting to bring the destruction. Triumph people are ones who know how to triumph. To triumph is to obtain victory or a state of being victorious in conquest. Triumph carriers is a distant emotion of God's children. In triumph, one expresses joy or execution because he or she is proposed, succeeded, or flourished an easy way to understand triumph is to think of a card played, a, a card played that takes all tasks. The triumph people I saw had the following characteristics. I'm going to give you the characteristics. Hold on one second. 
So here's the characteristics. The first characteristics of these people will be that they were influenced with a victorious attitude. Attitudes which signal the underlying emotions we have towards the task that the Lord has given us. So wrong attitudes can screw our perspe perspe perceptions and cloud our understanding of the fruits and the, our labors that we are producing. So we have to have the right attitude. Positioning your heart and mind on the Lord, however, will preserve you in the times of trouble and lead to a victorious attitude. So the Lord triumphed people had strong hearts. So ask the Lord to adjust your attitude to triumph. The next thing is they were aligned for victory. Attitude is linked with posture. Posture is linked with alignment. Posture and attitude, therefore, are linked with your positioning. An army must be aligned in order for victory. Alignment can be thought of as a snapping into place. The way a doctor must position a broken bone in its proper place in order for it to heal properly. God has an order and it will not manifest until we properly align ourselves. The triumph people were snapped into alignment for victory to create the prototype of triumph for the future. The next thing is they occupied a high level altitude and to adjust quickly, adapting to the needs of the battle and adjusting to over adjusting to overcome the strategy of the enemy require an aptitude. That means high up, high and high level at a higher level. Uh, a quick ability to apprehend something is not actually dependent on your intelligence, but your attitude. Those of a lesser intelligence can have the highest aptitude, and those who should have a high aptitude can be sabotaged by their attitudes or lack of commitment of being aligned. We have to have an attitude that en enables us to adjust quickly against our enemy and towards God's order. The attitude and resulting alignment allows you to see as God sees both the parts and how they fit together as a whole. The next thing is they were creative, they were cunning, and they were confrontational. Hello, people say, I am just not confrontational. Okay, then you can't be on the front line because the front line requires confrontation. Why? Because if the enemy is coming at you, are you going to say, I'm not going to be confrontational? No, you're going to fight back because I'm not going to die at the hand, at the hands of the wicked, right? So you have to have a good confrontational. See, if your attitude was aligned right, then confrontational issues would not be a problem because you know you're not coming out of the character of God. Creativity and cunning are like weapons the Lord has given us to overpower our enemy. But to use them effectively, we have to be willing to confront the enemy whether we want to or not. Consider how Jesus was led by the Spirit, confronted Satan in the wilderness. It was the bringing of the two op opposing forces in which truth could be revealed through God's word and prevail. And such confrontations are creativity and cunning, cunning will give us the advantage. We will create the new form of nothing. We will create new from nothing. We will create new from nothing. We will transform things into more prosperous forms or combine old forms into something with new qualities. Though many Christians do not understand that they are, they are shooter than the powers of darkness, we will outwit the enemy by our cunning, cunningness because our covenant relationship with God allows us to. So, I, you know, I'm not going to keep going into that. But, um... And the next thing I wanted to talk about was that there are places that are ruling with demonic centers. And I'm not going to get too much into um, what he reveals. You're just going to have to get this book. Um, but he talks about um, that there are particular places where centers have been established where they've allowed um, demonic influences to come in and have their way. And so he had a vision where he was high up and God allowed him to see the war that was waging against um, these demonic centers. And, um, and it was creating, it was creating chaos in the spirit realm. So, um, I wanted to leave you with this because this is my favorite part of the book. I have not read it all. As a matter of fact, that part that I just read to you, I have not read but the peculiar people, remember we spoke about peculiar people that God said is going to be a peculiar people? Well, guess what? I think you might want to know what peculiar people look like so you know what it what it's coming into. Uh, let's see. Okay. So these people 
Uh, I just want to see where he wrote down. Hold on. I wasn't going to read this part, but I feel led to. Um, I won't take much of your time this morning. I'm sure my, my, some of you are on your way to church, if not most of you. Okay, so they're they're empowered by the Holy Spirit. If you are moving in the new, you will see several changes. His fullness will be seen in your personality. Your soul will be restored from the last season. All fear and manipulation that have crowded your identity and confused you or confuse you to your past will leave your personality. Your identity will reflect his ability to overcome the mountains that stopped your progress. He has given you power over your enemies that would hinder that would hinder your progress. We are a nation above the nations concerning the governments of this world. However, we are called to pray for those in authority, not just for those whom we prefer to win the elections. We are peculiar people, not po not political. We can stir the cause of history with our prayers and acts of faith. And he says that the Holy Spirit enables us to triumph. So he keeps continue talking about these people will be full with the Holy Spirit. And then that their mind skin will be set for the new wine skin pouring in. And um, just so that you can identify what uh, these peculiar people would be. Okay, one, they're going to be shifting into the kingdom. The second thing is that they're going to know the difference between kingdom and church. The next thing will be that kingdom, He know, they're going to understand that kingdom is a government establishment. Uh, they're going to know that kingdom is ruled by a king, which is King Jesus. Uh, kingdom has an administration, and it goes on. So then it says the kingdom ha has a culture. There's a culture, you know, there's a there's a family atmosphere. The kingdom is the good news. Uh, kingdom is connected through generations. And then it says the heavenly kingdom is not based on worldly patterns. They're going to understand that. They're going to understand that the kingdom is is beyond natural a uh, man's natural thought. They're going to know that a kingdom cannot be attained by ambition. They're going to know that the kingdom should not should never be postponed. They're going to understand that the ki kingdom has provision. The kingdom has a t territory, and that the kingdom has an atmosphere. Kingdom has prophets. The kingdom has war units. The kingdom has gatekeepers. The kingdom has treasurers. The kingdom has music and sound. The kingdom has people who serve as priests and Levites. And the kingdom has a, a sh chief ministers. Um, he says, I'm, I am extremely thankful for the chief ministers God has established at the glory of Zion who minister and help others. They have gone through so much and have testimonies that overcome. And I guess what he means by chief ministers is that those who are kind of like been through a lot and kind of understand, you know, how to overcome it. And then you have kingdom as power. So we are now moving into this season and God is bringing in people one by one. What did he say? First Colossians. He said in 12, 22, 1, 2, 2, 2. He said, for day by day, men kept coming to help to, to David, to help him until there was a great army like the army of God. Let's look at it like this. Day by day, men kept coming to Jesus to help him until there was a great army like God on the, on the earth. Let your will be done on earth. So that's what I have. My dream, if you didn't hear it from the beginning, go back. The army of the Lord is rising. Day by day, men are being added onto it to help Jesus to um, to make the army look like God's army. And I wouldn't mess around with God's army. God gave, what, Gillian the 300 when he wanted, like, how many? And he didn't think he would be able to make it, and he had the victory. So God's army will have the victory. So hopefully I hope that you understood this. If you have any questions, send it over to me and I can kind of break it down in a simpler form. I had to read through this really quick because I didn't get to read it for myself. But it had so came together with the dream. And that's just confirmation. When God does that, he's just confirming what he is doing on the now season. So the now season will be to get yourself equipped, get yourself right, and get aligned with the army. Find who is walking with the fullness of the Holy Spirit and take it from there. Um, ask God to help you, to align you to where you need to be. Or if you are in a place, is that where I need to be? So I hope this blesses you and have a great day at church today, guys. And those who are not going to church, seek him.